Hey peeps, I hope that you're keeping well and that you and your loved ones are blessed. So this is a real quick one. This is actually a question being answered on behalf of a wonderful lady who asked me, B, how do I find the right vocal coach? How do I find the right vocal teacher for me? How do I find them? So we're gonna discuss this today in seven key points that I hope will help you, not just to find the right vocal coach, but also help you to discern whether you found the wrong one, okay? So let's get into the video. Okay, so number one, I personally believe, and please, disclaimer, this is all in my opinion. So don't say, oh, no, no, no. like this is in my opinion and also from my own experiences, not just as a vocal teacher, but as a student, as a learner, yeah? So number one for me is that I personally believe if you are a vocal teacher or a vocal coach, you should realistically be able to sing. You should be able to hold a note. You should be able to hold a little pitch. You know what I mean? I find it very difficult and I've had my own experiences, right? Where you have a vocal coach, but they can't sing. And they're trying to feed information to you, but they can't actually show it you. And because I'm heavily kinesthetic, I'm a visual, but I'm also heavily kinesthetic. I need to hear, I need to experience with you potentially what you want me to do. Now, am I trying to say that the vocal teacher has to be Celine Dion or Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston or Luther Vandross? No, I'm not saying that. But ideally, your vocal coach should be able to sing, should be able to hold pitch, sustain notes, ideally be able to harmonize as well. So that is number one. Number two, this is one that really irks me, but I hear a lot of feedback when people come to me regarding this. Your vocal teacher should allow you to be musically free and they should be supporting you in that arena as well. It should not be a case of because the person only listens to R&B that they're only prepared to teach you R&B based knowledge around vocals or they only want you to sing R&B. If you are someone that is into rock, if you're into electro pop, reggae, you know, whatever. Ultimately, your vocal coach should allow you to be musically free and also encourage you to bring out your artistry in that way. Now, of course, there is a dichotomy of classical versus contemporary. I would like to leave that for another video, but ultimately, if that vocal coach is not allowing you to be musically free and they are stifling you, that's a red flag. So number three, I can't lie, I'm a bit nervous to speak about this one and I, I'm hoping that I will word it right. So. This is basically from my experience as well, so it's very close to my heart. But while anatomy is very, 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 very important, it's not enough to just have a vocal coach or a voice teacher that focuses predominantly on anatomy and that's it. Because if you can't implement then how that anatomy can benefit or enhance your voice or protect your voice or give you a better relationship with your voice, then you may as well just go and buy the science books yourself and just have a read on the way to your next destination. It's not really fruitful to do so. So whilst anatomy is important, your vocal coach or voice teacher should be able to help you to implement those skills and that knowledge that they are giving you. Yeah? This is the time I like to call reflective practice, where yourself and your vocal coach can come together and discuss things that you are currently enjoying, perhaps you find something challenging, or even maybe you lack an understanding on something, but this moment has to happen. Number five simply is that your vocal coach should be prepared to challenge you. If they are keeping you in a very regimented way, if you feel like you're not blossoming, you're not blooming, you're not having experiences within your lessons that a hard work and you're like you're getting frustrated because this is a lot right now then in my humble opinion you're not being challenged enough you are coming to that person to develop you to enhance you to germinate within your vocal journey so if you are just staying in the same place or everything is great everything's a yes everything's easy nothing really pushes your voice and you're staying in the same place i too call that a red flag number six okay your vocal coach should be able to sing right i said this earlier but they should not be singing throughout your whole lesson right your vocal coach should not be there flaunting their voice flaunting their talents showing you how amazing they are and then you get around 10 minutes in your vocal lesson for them to implement growth and nurture and help you that doesn't make any sense it's important that your vocal coach of course ideally can sing but they are also doing their best throughout the time allotted to make sure that your voice is developing more and more and more. Your lesson is not their gig. Your lesson is not their concert, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Number seven, this means a lot to me, but I'm saying this seriously. Does your vocal coach allow you to be vulnerable? Do you feel safe with them? 
if you're in a moment where you feel a bit weak in a certain area, do they encourage you? Do they give you the support that you need in the right season? Are they making sure that they are interested in your mental health? They are invested in your whole journey? Or are they simply just focused on knowledge and don't ask me nothing else? If that's the case, that is a big, big red flag because the voice, never mind music, is such a sensitive thing. And it's very, very important that your vocal coach, your vocal teacher is able to understand and have compassion and be able to navigate through that with you. And in like manner, just to conclude, they should also be vulnerable as well. If your vocal coach, you ask them a question and they don't know, peeps, the amount of times I've said, do you know what? That's a really good question. And I'm going to find out for you because I'm not too sure myself or at times where, hey, vocalists are far better than me. I've had a situation where I was going through a breathing technique and that day I was very, very fatigued and I could just about get to 12 seconds. And I remember it was a first time student and they were looking at me like, and I said to them, do you know what? I've had such a busy week. I'm very, very fatigued today. So forgive me that I can't complete this exercise that I'm showing you, but I'm gonna help you get through right now so that you can complete it. So I've still got you, we've got this. Don't watch me right now in my very uh, state because I've got the skills and I've also got the willpower to make sure that you can do it. So it's okay for you to be vulnerable as a vocal coach or voice teacher if you are watching this. But yes, just make sure that they want to create a safe space, not just for themselves, but for you as well. Okay, so yes, peeps, those are my tips in regards to finding the right vocal coach or the right vocal teacher. Have you got any that you want to share? Or is there any experiences that maybe you've had that you would care to share? Leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you liked this video, please give it a like so that more people can get to see it. And if you want me to do more videos like this, just let me know, give me some suggestions. And um, yeah, I look forward to catching up with you soon. But until we do, much love, take care and God bless. Bye.